Praise the Lord, children. Praise the living God. I can hear that hallelujah. Praise the living God. Good job. Welcome to this worship experience. We're so excited you are able to join in today. So, we believe that we're going to have fun in God's presence as we worship Him. So, put on your dancing shoes, strengthen your clapping hands, and get ready with your singing and shouting lips and mouths, okay? All right? Good. So, before we start praise and worship, let's close our eyes and pray. Dear God, we thank you for this opportunity to gather together in your name as one, even though we are in different locations. We thank you for keeping us safe. We thank you for your goodness and your kindness towards us, towards our friends, towards our family, and to towards our church and towards our country. Father, we commit this worship experience into your hands. We ask, Lord, that you take absolute control of everything that we do here today. And that as we worship in your presence, that our joy will be full and we would have fun and experience you in a new way today. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Amen. So, I'm so excited. Are you excited? Good. It's time for praise and worship. Yay! Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Let's praise the Lord. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Let's praise the Lord.
and let's continue to praise the Lord. Your hands.
to you and you were always there In troubled times it's you I see I put you first, that's all I need I humble all I am, all to you One way, Jesus You're the only one that I could live for One way, Jesus You're the only one that I could live for You're the only one, you're the only one you're the only one that I could live for You're the only one You're the only one You're the only one that I could live for You were always, always there Every how and everywhere The grace abounds so deeply within me You will never, ever change Yesterday, today
Father, we thank you for such an exciting time in your presence. Children, have you been blessed? Praise the Lord. So it's time to worship God. I want you to be calm. Close your eyes. Open your heart to Jesus as we say these words to him. Repeat after me. Jesus, Jesus, all I want is to be like you. As we sing this song in worship to God, I want you to open your heart and just say it to him. Jesus, Jesus, all we truly want is to be like you. Hallelujah. Close your eyes. Amen. to be like you all we truly want is to follow your footsteps all we really want is to listen and follow as you lead us and so father as we listen to your word today we say all we really want to do is listen and obey you father help us to do so in jesus mighty name we have prayed amen Praise the Lord. Put your hands together for Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Hello, guys. Hello, influencers. How are you doing? How did you influence your world for Christ this week? Did you pray for someone? Did you read your Bible? Did you worship? Did you say something positive to someone this week? Like, Jesus loves you. Did you help at home? Remember, God can be attracted or not attracted to us by the way we live every day. I pray that the way you live will attract God to you always. Amen. I hope you have your five items today. Your notebook, very important. Make sure you take notes. Your pen, your fresh fire, your Bible, and your offering. A discussion is from God's Favorite House devotional. You can get a copy from the resource center in God's favorite house 
or from the Ebano supermarket or you access the link below. What did we do last week? Last week, our topic was what? Who can remind me? Can you remember? Attraction. Yes, you are correct. Attraction. We learned what attraction is, how to position ourselves to attract God's presence and blessings and to not be slack or take God related things for granted as this does not attract God to us. Don't take God for granted. Can you remember that video last week? We're going to be talking a lot more about the video and how the fire came down from heaven this week. And so our topic today is what? The fire. Yes, we are going to talk about the fire today. And a memory verse is taken from Acts 2, 1 and 3. It says, on the day Pentecost was being fulfilled, all the disciples were gathered in one place. Then all at once, a pillar of fire appeared before their eyes. It separated into tongues of fire that engulfed each one of them. Let's take that again. Acts 2, 1 and 3. On the day Pentecost was being fulfilled, all the disciples were gathered in one place. Then all at once, a pillar of fire appeared before their eyes. It separated into tongues of fire that engulfed each one of them. What does it mean to engulf? Engulf means to sweep over something so as to surround it or to cover it completely. To cover completely is the meaning of engulf. The introductory paragraph in our topic today is also a verse of scripture that is 1 Kings 18.38. And it says, immediately the fire, not the word again. In our memory verse, it's a pillar of fire. In this verse of scripture, it says, the fire of the Lord flashed down from heaven and burned up the young bull, the wood, the stone, and the dust. Last week, we watched a video of how the fire came down like a nuclear explosion and consumed the sacrifice of Elijah. In both our memory verse and the first paragraph, we see the word, the fire. We all know fire, don't we? I mean, can you tell me how fire is generated? They've taught you that in school, right? I'm sure you've done some in science. You've read about it before, you know. For, for you to have fire, you need oxygen, you need heat, and you need foil. Some form of friction. If you rub your hands together for a while, you begin to generate heat. And when that friction continues, you will actually generate fire. Some of us may not like fire because it's burnt us before, either while lighting candles or matches or playing with fire experience gone wrong you know no matter how small or big fire is what is powerful fire is powerful and fire is also creative and is destructive it's creative because it can give us light and warmth you know for people that live in cold regions you know they use fire to generate warmth you know and then you can use it for cooking you can use it for making iron and steel. You know the knives that you use in the kitchen? Those are the things that they use fire to melt and to make them into knives. Um, do you know fire can actually stop bleeding as well? You know, it can stop bleeding because extreme heat will essentially melt or seal the wound and blood vessels around it. So fire is very important both in our everyday life and spiritually. Do you also know that fire can burn? You know, fire burns and it can kill in fire accidents. So that's why some people are afraid of fire. In the Bible, fire is most often seen as a symbol of the power and presence of God. And it is the way that it's featured in the Bible. 
in both the Old Testament and in the New Testament. So why are we talking about fire? You know, I always like to ask that question. It's because it's an attribute of God that we should familiarize ourselves with. We can't ignore that aspect of God because our God is what? Is a consuming fire. What do we mean by this? God's love for us is so much. It's so much is like a hot, is hot like fire. And you know, he can do anything for us, including giving his son to die for us. That's how passionate God is. His anger for our enemies or his enemies are equally so much, so intense that it's like fire. You know, isn't that also the case with the fires of anger and love? You know, someone can be so angry, they're feeling so hot, you know, they're so angry. And then it's like a spark and they're igniting and, you know, they're agitated and they're just spreading the conflict all over the place. In the same way, one can burn with love and passion. You know that song that says, oh Lord, set my heart on fire for you, which is like a fire. It will spread God's flame of kindness, melting the hearts of those around them. The anger of God, however, is also described as being like fire by the psalmist. It says, the earth trembled and quaked and the foundations of the mountains shook. They trembled because he was angry. Smoke rose from his nostrils. He was breathing like this. Mm, mm. Consuming fire came from his mouth. Burning coals blazed out of it. That's from Psalm 18 verse 8. Both ways, fire consumes and engulfs. Is either for something with a great deal of passion or zeal, or God is against something with a great deal of anger or fury. That's why we need to understand that God is a consuming fire. So God is also against sin and disloyalty with just as much heat as he is for those who love and diligently seek him. His attitude is not cool in any way, shape, or form, but is hot. Similarly, fire is hot, and it is both positive and negative. It symbolizes both refining and purifying on one hand, and death and destruction on the other one. Now, Acts 2, 1 and 3, and 1 Kings 18, 38, they show the importance of fire in the Bible, as we will be discussing today. So what are the significance, what are the importance of fire in the Bible? In the Old Testament, fire represents presence and guidance. One, it represents presence and guidance. Fire is a symbol of God's presence, as in the book of Exodus, where Moses meets with God at the burning bush. God also appeared as a pillar of fire to lead the Israelites out of Egypt. Two, it's a sign of sacrifice. This is the focus discussion for us today in 1 Kings 18, 20 to 40a. So we'll be talking about that. God sending his fire to show acceptance of sacrifice that he is the living God. Three, God also uses fire as correction of evil Remember Sodom and Gomorrah. These are examples that can be found in the Bible as you study the word of God. Fire was not only mentioned in the Old Testament, but also in the New Testament. Fire in the New Testament describes the coming of the Holy Spirit to the disciples. We will be discussing this today as well. That's our memory verse. And it also speaks of judgment and of purification. Fire is also used to represent judgment or punishment. This foresees the end of the world when fire from heaven will come down to burn the earth. It also describes the fires of hell into which the devil will be cast. Revelations 20.10 And also as a purification, it means burning away the impure to leave the pure. Okay. So now that we've seen the relevance of fire, how important it is and it's an attribute of God, let's go into our discussion for today. The first one is fire in the New Testament, which is our memory verse for today, Acts 2, 1 and 3, as the coming of the Holy Spirit upon the disciples and the fire in the Old Testament, 1 Kings 18, 
2048 to show that God is the powerful, is true, and is the living God. So the first one is from our memory verse where we're describing how the fire came down on the disciples. For many Christians, fire in the New Testament is important because it is associated with the coming of the Holy Spirit. After the crucifixion, that's the nailing to the cross, the resurrection, the rising again, and the ascension going up to heaven of Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit comes to the disciples on the day of Pentecost as tongues of fire. While studying or taking classes, they could speak in all sorts of languages. Can you imagine that? They just started speaking in all sorts of languages. Holy Spirit engulfed them. He covered them completely. He consumed the fear that held them back. He gave them love. He gave them zeal. He gave them passion. He gave them boldness. He gave them various abilities. This shows the fruits of that fire. That means that there are things that come out when the fire of God consumes us. The Holy Spirit came upon the disciples. They went to the street of Jerusalem. He caused them to open their mouths, which were previously shut by the fear of men. And what did they declare? They declared the prophecies spoken about this event and the wonderful works of God. And what was the result? 3,000 were added to them. That is totally, totally amazing. Fire always produces change. Note that. Wherever you see the fire of God, it brings about change. It will force one to act and to respond. The same Peter, can you remember Peter, who denied Jesus three times, became a powerful preacher and brought over 3,000 to Christ. That is what the fire can do. And it doesn't stop there. The great news of the Pentecost story is that we too can have that powerful fire from the Holy Spirit. God dwells in us and all who believes in him can receive the Holy Spirit from Jesus. We can love others and shine the light of Christ all around us. We can be on fire for him in our hearts and communicate that through our lives. What a blessing and privilege to be part of something so important. Hallelujah. The second part of our discussion today is the fire in the Old Testament. And the example is the one from 1 Kings 18. We will see that God is powerful, is true, and is the living God. Throughout the Old Testament, animals were often used as a sacrifice for an offering to God. If fire was sent from heaven to burn the sacrifice, this was seen as a sign of the living God's acceptance of the gift. Elijah was a prophet, a man of God in this story, and the people of Israel, God's people, were serving false god named Baal. Elijah said, Today, we have to make a choice between Baal and the living God. So there was a competition. There was a contest between the 700 prophets who believed in Baal and Elijah, who believed in God. Elijah said they should call on, on, on their God and he will call on the God of Israel and see who will answer by fire. And then the contest started. This was the test to find out who the living God is. And guess what? They called on their God, they set up their altar, they danced, they tried everything. They did, even Elijah started mocking them, but their God did not come. Then Elijah set up his own altar using 12 stones, water, wood, and a bull sacrifice. He prayed and called on God and the fire came out of heaven, boom, and everything was gone. Not only did the sacrifice completely burn up, but the altar burned as well. Even the water in the trenches, everything gone. Our God is a consuming fire and he answers us when we call. It's important for you to note that today, that when we call on God, he answers. Did God answer Elijah's prayer to reveal who the true God was and who his true servant was? Oh yes, oh yes, in a very dramatic way. God left no doubts in the people's minds about who he is 
and how wrong they had been. Fires are usually always noticed. They draw attention. Fire brings focus. It helps the people to believe in the God of Elijah, the true living God. As the fire of God falls in this season, God's fire is not only going to, one, consume the sacrifice. What does that mean? Just imagine when fire consumes gold. When fire consumes gold, it refines it. It heats it up. It doesn't destroy the gold, but it brings out the beauty in the gold. It makes it begin to shine. It makes it more usable, more valuable for you. That is what it means when the fire of God consumes the sacrifice. It's also going to engulf us. You remember I defined the word engulf at the beginning. That's to consume completely and to engulf the physical place where we are such that the dust of the ground will heal the sick. You know, God's hand can be on a people and on the place where they are. Imagine when Elisha's dead body healed someone in the Bible. There was a spark and the body came to life. God can bring healing, blessings, miracles, to the people in a particular location, such as recreating all that needs to be created, doors opening of their own accord, and the blind will see, the lame will work. In this season, God's fire can make the impossible become possible. Like the disciples, even online, people can watch a program online and receive healing as well, or whatever they are trusting God for. Hallelujah. We give God all the glory. Now, in 1 Kings 18, 39, and when all the people saw it, they fell face down. They fell face down on the ground and cried out, the Lord is God. The Lord is God. The fire of the Lord draws people's hearts towards him and brings people closer to God. Always, every single time, that's what the fire of the Lord does. It brings people's hearts towards him such that they will cry out, the Lord, he is God. When people see the reality and the demonstration of the power of God, miracles, testimonies, we call it, they declare the Lord, he is God. <laughs> There's a story in the Bible of the ark of God and Dagon. Dagon is a small God. The first time they put Dagon and where the ark of God was, Dagon did what? He fell face, face down. He was falling on his face to the ground before the ark of God the next morning. They took Dagon. They put him up again. Guess what happened the next morning? The second time, he was falling on his face to the ground before the ark of God. And the head of Dagon and both his arms hands were cut off from the threshold. Only the trunk, that's the body, was left. What did I say? The Lord is God. Every other God, they bow to the supremacy of our living God. Hallelujah. Now, he also says, seize all the prophets of Baal. Don't let a single one escape. In this season, God will arrest all the prophets of Baal present in your life in any form in Jesus' name. Amen. Remember we discussed that God doesn't like false teaching. He doesn't like false teaching. The fire of God brought judgment and punishment to the prophets of Baal. Now, the statement, what we see in 1 Kings 18, 20 to 40, is a battle of gods. Is Who is your God? You know some people are dedicated to strange gods, strange idols, <laughs> like they're dedicated to their shoes, their clothes. Some people are dedicated to food, to entertainment, to games. They are called strange because you, you are not supposed to be dedicated to these things. They are not necessarily bad, but they take a lot of your time, your love, or there are things that are trying to take your attention away from praying, from worshipping, and from reading the Bible. This reminds me of Mary and Martha. Mary desired to be with God, with Jesus, and she was sitting. But Martha was busy 
you know, cooking and everything. Yes, they have to cook, but it's important to, to, to also sit at the feet of Jesus. Every God that is on your case will bow. The God of creation will bring them to their knees. Every distraction, everything that is not causing you to give God the kind of time and attention that you ought to. So, who is your God? Your God is who you worship, you spend time with, you pray to, you believe in for help that you can't get from people. That's from your mom, your dad, and your doctors. God is able to give you help that people cannot give you. Sorry. In Exodus 15, 11, a song was sung when the Israelites were delivered from Egypt. God delivered them from slavery and the Red Sea and led them by the pillar of cloud by the day and the pillar of fire. Remember that word, pillar of fire by the night. They sang, who is like unto thee, O Lord, among the gods? Who is like thee? You are glorious in holiness. You are fearful in praises, doing wonders. Hallelujah. As you sing this song to him, you enthrone him in your life. Expect his fire to fall. Hallelujah. So what did the fire of the Lord do in the lives of the disciples from what we've been discussing? Can you point out some of them? It changed their hearts and changed their lives. A changed heart is equal to a changed life. He also changed their direction. They hurried back to Jerusalem. He also changed their message. They no longer mourn about um, the death of Jesus. They proclaim that he was alive, he's alive, he's alive. Hallelujah. He also changed their attitude completely. They developed passion, boldness, zeal, even in the face of death. These are the things that the fire did for the disciples. So, do you have a heart for God? Have you placed your faith in the finished work of the Lord Jesus Christ? Have you come to him for salvation? If not, then I want to invite you to come to him now and receive eternal life through faith in Jesus. Do you want to experience this fire of God? Do you want to experience God in a different way? Do you want him to give you boldness? Do you want him to give you abilities and things that you were not able to do before? I want you to commit your heart to him today and say, I invite you, Jesus, come into my heart, come into my life, come and take control of my life. I commit my life in, to you. I believe in Lord Jesus, in the Lordship of Jesus. Invite him into your life and he will take absolute control and his fire will fall on you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. What are the four tips to stay burning for Jesus? We have to stay burning for Jesus. Remember we say released into our destinies, taking the world for Christ. So what are the four tips to stay burning for Jesus? Quickly, we continue doing the things that please God and stay away from the things that does not please him. That is just simple. We've been discussing for the past few weeks different ways to keep pleasing God and to stay away from things that does not please God. Two, make room for God daily. In your 24 hours, you can't tell me that you can't give 5, 10, 15 minutes to God. Take it up gradually, but make sure you make room for God daily. When we get so busy in our lives, we begin to crowd God out with other priorities. We smoother the fire in our hearts. So make sure you don't crowd your, your life with cooking and doing so many things. Make room 5, 10, 15 minutes for God every day. Worship him, praise, and do all those things that you need to do. And that takes us to point three. Read your Bible and pray. If you neglect the word of God, if we neglect spending time with him in prayer and fellowship, our hearts will begin to cool and our activity will begin to slow to a stop. So read your Bible, pray and worship every day. And finally, 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 the tips to keep burning as a child of God, serve in your local community, in your local church. 
God has given you an abundance of gifts and talents. Use them for the glory of his name. You will see how he will open doors for you to put them into practice. Instead of waiting for everyone else to wait on your needs, why not start by serving others and set yourself on fire for God? Hallelujah. Okay, so that's it for today. Um, let's say our prayers um, and commit ourselves into the hands of the Lord. Our prayer today says, Father, I thank you because this season will not pass me by. I will experience your fire for good and every enemy of my destiny will be consumed by your fire. And so, Father, we pray that, Lord, consume us with your fire. Set our heart on fire for you. We want to be like you. We want to be like Jesus. We want to serve like Jesus and consume every enemy of our destiny. Everything that is preventing us from being as close to you as we ought to. In Jesus' name, amen. All right. So have a great week. You know all your safety tips. Stay safe. Be good. Be helpful. Stay with God and be in God. Have a great week. Bye.